Snowfall means spending for Barnstable, and our town is named a creative community. Details on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Wednesday, February 20th, 2013. I'm Sarah Colvin. A big blizzard blew through town earlier this month, knocking down trees and piling up snow throughout the town. While things are mostly back to normal here in Barnstable, the bills are starting to come in for cleanup costs. Director of Finance Mark Mill explains that while it may not be possible per to predict spending for snow removal, the town uh, is prepared. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why the town council has a policy reserve where they set aside an amount that's equivalent to 4% of the general fund budget, and which is about $5 million. So that money is set aside specifically for um, purposes like this. So in the event that we incur a large cost, um, such as all uh, the costs associated with snow removal and tree removal with this last storm, we, we have a funding source to, to access to pay for that. Um, the challenge in the budget process then becomes, um, if you do access that, how do you restore it? And so, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why you prepare your revenue estimates somewhat on a conservative basis is that in the event you have a situation like this where you have to draw down on that reserve, you have to have a mechanism to replenish that reserve. And so, if our revenues, our actual revenues, come in higher than what we estimated in the budget, we generate surplus, which can then restore that council. Milne says federal funding could be available. The Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, or MEMA, is, is in the initial step, uh, the initial phases of collecting information and doing initial damage assessments. Um, they're asking every community to um, complete the forms necessary to assess whether or not we will be eligible for federal relief. Um, because if it was declared a disaster area, um, we, we're optimistic that if uh, we'll be able, to, we'll be eligible for, to, for some of these storm-related costs. Um, in the past, it's been up to 75 percent of those costs. So, if we are successful in, in, in getting that aid, we could put a significant dent in the amount of surplus, our own surplus that we need to use. Um, in order to pay for the cost of the storm, if we can get reimbursed by the by the federal government for uh, for the uh, costs associated with the storm cleanup, the cost for tree removal alone could be more than a hundred thousand dollars. In Boston Tuesday, representatives from the town of Barnstable gathered for the presentation of the 2013 Commonwealth Awards. Ira Lapidus, chair of the Massachusetts Cultural Council, opened the ceremony. I'm Ira Lapidus, and I'm the chair of the Mass Cultural Council. It's my honor to welcome you here and thank you for joining us in celebrating exceptional achievement in the arts, humanities, and sciences in Massachusetts. This is truly the highest honor that the Commonwealth bestows. I am humbled to be in the room with so many of our 2013 awardees and past awardees, especially my dear friend Olivia Dukakis who has graced us with her presence today. Thank you. done so much to make Massachusetts so extraordinary. I'm also honored to thank our distinguished legislators who are here, who have made the mission of the Mass Cultural Council their priority also. Just one grant to an organization, for example, Shakespeare and Company in the Berkshires, can generate $10 million in income generation and provide over 200 jobs. It's very important that we continue and increase our organizational support for all the organizations in the state of Massachusetts as they generate jobs and they generate income and they generate a quality of life that we all want in the state of Massachusetts. The arts, as MCC Executive Director Anita Walker explains, are integral to our daily lives. Making the world a better place is what we are all trying to do every single day at the Massachusetts Cultural Council. We're not an economic development agency, but when we do the arts well, jobs grow and prosperity accrues in our cities and towns. We are not an education agency, 
But when we assure every child an opportunity to participate in the arts, they get a better education. We're not a human service agency. Yet when thousands of our most troubled young people have an opportunity to participate in the arts, lives are saved. The committed people who do this work do not ride to the office on a white stallion. Maybe a blue horse. Every one of our honorees today is a hero, and so are all of you. So let's begin at the beginning. And what better beginning than one of our creative communities that is among the oldest towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Barnstable was first explored in 1902, and by the late 1800s, there were some 800 ships harbored on that coastline. Now, a hundredfold times of people stream into Barnstable and Hyenas and the other villages to take part in the shanties, the artist shanties, and the galleries, and the historic sites, and the businesses. I'd like to invite Senator Dan Wolf, who is a member of our Committee on Tourism, Arts, and Cultural Development, to come forward and make this honor to Tom Lynch, who is the town manager of Barnstable. Barnstable received the 2013 Commonwealth Award for Creative Community, presented by Cape and Island State Senator Dan Wolf. We're going to do the Imagine uh, again. Imagine a beach. Imagine 82 degrees and a gentle breeze tickling across the face. Sparkling water with waves breaking. Year-round down on Cape Cod, it's like that. <laughs> In fact, I need to get back for the afternoon golf game. The, the beauty of the environment of Cape Cod, and let me see a show of hands. Who has been to Cape Cod within the last five years? I should have said who hasn't. Not a single hand would have gone up. The beauty of the environment, the special lighting that we have, uh, is so precious to us. And it is inspired for generations and generations the greatest artists in the United States, and, and I dare say in the world, that have come to that environment and been so inspired by it that they have created art that we have all enjoyed around the world. The town of Barnstable has the privilege of being the first town on Cape Cod, but hopefully the first of many towns on Cape Cod, to have been given the distinct privilege of being one of the cultural districts in Massachusetts. And so it is my huge pleasure, because the Cape is the epicenter, and by the way, I'm looking at my good colleague, Ben Downing, and uh, Senator Downing from the western part of the state, the Berkshires, we have what I would call a healthy competition, because I'm sure when you hear from Ben, he's gonna claim that the Berkshires are actually the cultural destination of Massachusetts. But with, with that kind of healthy competition, we can fill in the middle uh, and, and make the Commonwealth, the entire Commonwealth, the cultural destination around the world that we know it is. So on behalf of the town of Barnstable, I'd like all of the other uh, visitors from Barnstable to come on up because we're going to do a photo op. So uh, Wendy, Kevin Howard, Lynn Royan, uh, we're going to do a quick photo op. Each year, the MCC recognizes the achievements of organizations, artists, leaders, and philanthropists who've enhanced the arts in Massachusetts. 2013 recipients include, of course, the town of Barnstable, the Boston Phoenix, the Worcester Ecotarium, fellow creative community Shelburne Falls, and Academy Award-winning actress Olympia Dukakis. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.